So the Vesped kit is of the Panther Al Strong G. So this was the last version of the Panther to actually see combat during World War II. This particular kit by Vesped is focused on the version fitted with the FG-1250, which is basically the uh, little device up here, which is one of the world's first infrared night fighting systems to actually get fitted to a tank. Uh, and this was obviously a huge advantage. It meant that the Germans were able to see it during the night. There's a little bit of mystery surrounding it as to exactly how many were used. But uh, there are reports of them being used uh, during the war. Um, so it's quite an interesting little kit. Um, and this is one of the newest Panthers to come out. It came out originally in, I believe, 2021. And uh, Vespid are a relatively newcomer as far as I'm aware, but they've been producing some pretty new kits. So I'll start off by having a little look at the box art here, which is really quite nice. Again, it's that sort of classic painted style. You've got the Panther sitting in the middle of a roadway with what looks like, I believe, a Comet or a uh, Cromwell. Uh, burning in the background there and another little panther coming onto the road and a few little searchlights kind of sticking up um, Really quite a nice beautiful little bit of box art on the side here You've got some uh, little links to Vespid's uh, socials and that sort of thing and uh, then you've got the um, Marking options in this kit. So there's three. These are the first two um, So one from Moravia April 1945 and the test vehicle from Germany in September 1944 and um, on the top here you'll see the version that's featured on the box art which is from late 1944 to early 1945 um, and as you can see on the side here you've got a few things that the Zvezda and a lot of other kits that are in this scale do not come with and that is the photo etched parts and also some 3d printed components so we'll have a little more of a dive into those when we actually look at the insides of the kit so yeah having a look at the instructions they're a little bit nicer than these Zvezda instructions they're printed on this sort of glossy paper and they're in color They've also got a really good little uh, handy key there, so you know what all of the icons are. Um, so opening it up here, you've got a sprue map, and as you can see, there's a fair few more sprues, and uh, a lot of smaller parts are moulded separately rather than in a simplified um, single piece like in the Vezda kit, mainly the road wheels for that case. Um, and you've also got the photo etch parts here for the um, things like the side skirts and the radiator covers and all of those details, which we'll have a look at. Um, a few 3D printed parts here, also, um, one of them's a muzzle brake and there's also a metal barrel and also the 3D printed night vision scope which is quite cool, we'll have a look at them soon. Colour guide here, so you've got Mr. Hobby, Hobby Colour, Humbrol and Tamiya. So um, you should be able to find one of them and if not it should be relatively easy to convert it. Um, so assembling the kit, you again start off with the hull which is sort of moulded as one piece. Again, you've got to attach all of the individual arms on, but this time you're going to need a little bit of glue to keep them in place. Um, so you've got your final drive cover there, your sprocket, which comes in two parts. This kit's going to be a little bit more time consuming and fiddly because you've got to stick on all of the individual interlocking road wheels, and you've also got to make sure you don't mix them up. So that's one of the frustrating things about building German tanks, but I think it makes it a little bit more realistic. You kind of get to have a little bit of an idea on how tricky it would have been to actually change a road wheel in real life on one of these things. Um, then you've got your idler wheel, and um, one of the things that are different in this kit compared to the Zvezda kit is you've got options for different parts because it's a little bit more detailed. So here you've got an option for two different idler wheels, and uh, which one you pick will depend on what scheme you're doing because it's a slightly different version of the Panther. So it's nice that they capture some of those finer little uh, intricacies between the tanks. And as you'll see through this, there's a lot more to come. Um, so here you've got your tracks, and there, like I've been saying, the individual links. So you've got separate kind of sections that you have to glue together. This is a little bit more fiddly and time consuming than the Zvezda kit, but it's a little bit more likely to work out for you just because you're less likely to actually break parts while you're doing it. Then you've got the upper hole here, which you're gluing on into place, and also the rear wall here. Um, a little bit more fiddly because you've got to drill out some of the holes. They aren't actually pre-molded into the rear plate there, but that's mainly because you'll have the same kit or same sprue being used for different versions. So some of them will have the um, need to have these drilled out and others won't. Um, you've also got um, optionals, options for two different holes, and that's basically going to affect which radiator system you have in place. So once you put the upper hole on, you've got things like the uh, front machine gun, you've got the driver and the assistant driver's hatch separate, which means that you could pose them in the open position if you wanted to, which is nice. A um, few different options here for sights. You've got one that's basically got a little cover for debris and weather, and another that doesn't. A um, few photo etched grills and frames for the back of the uh, engine deck, which is really quite nice. 
And uh, here you've got the uh, installation of the little frame there that holds the side skirts on, which will be a little bit fiddly. Um, if you remember in the Zvezda kit, they kind of attach onto that part that goes between the two sections of the hull, which is much more solid and strong. However, this one's a little bit more finely detailed, and it means that you can also take some sections off, um, since oftentimes uh, the tanks would have bits of their side skirts torn off due to either running into stuff or getting shot at. We've also got a few photo etched uh, lifting hooks and that sort of thing to put in place. Pretty fiddly, but you can get some really nice detailed results out of that. Uh, all of your accessories get glued onto the side there, pretty similar to the Zvezda kit. Some of the accessories for the back of the tank here, like your um, stowage bins there with a little bit of photo etching, uh, a set of um, towing uh, hooks there, or towing cable, a few more accessories on the other side, um, more accessories, and um, pretty similar to the Zvezda kit in that you've got a lot of accessories, but there's just a few more on this kit, and a few photo etched options. Um, then you come to the turret here, so Basically, it's pretty similar construction uh, with a few extra little components there to make the, um, the elevation system for the gun there. And uh, then you've got an option for either a metal barrel and a 3D printed muzzle brake and a plastic one. Uh, we'll have a little look at them, but uh, personally, I think that you can still get pretty nice results out of the plastic ones these days, especially in this particular kit. And uh, once you've assembled the um, turret, the base of the turret, then you've got a few accessories to put on here. You've got the option to have two different mantlets that we'll have a little look at. And a few other photo etched accessories. You've got the individual vision blocks for the cupola, um, cupola uh, however you want to pronounce that one. Uh, a few extra little um, pieces here and there. Uh, then of course you've got your very important infrared sight there. So you've got a plastic option or there is a molded uh, or 3D printed one there which is um, pre-assembled basically so you can just glue that into place. Separate turret hatch there for the commander, which is nice. You can have it posed in either the open or the closed position. Uh, the uh, travel lock, which can be either assembled up or uh, in transit or down. So when the vehicle is in action and the turret lock is not needed to keep it in place for transport. Uh, a few other little accessories um, in terms of tow cables there. And uh, then you've got the side skirts. So there's two different kind of styles of side skirts included in this kit. So uh, which one you use will be depending on the variant that you choose to do for the scheme. And uh, then you basically just put your exhausts into place. These ones are the later war one with the kind of turbine at the top to try and prevent the amount of smoke coming out or kind of filter it. Um, or another option here, which is just the regular kind of uh, exhaust system. Uh, and then you've kind of got a little basic uh, schematic of the three different paint options and what the vehicle kind of looks like when you assemble it. You can kind of notice a few little things here and there, but it's a little bit easier to look out for where it says paint option one and three for, say, these exhausts or paint option two for that other one. Uh, and then you've got the painting guides. And here you'll see what I mean in terms of the Zvezda one not being really good. Um, this is excellent. So you've got the actual paints in color, so you can really clearly tell which one's which. Um, decals are easy to spot and you've got a total view of the entire tank so you've got the top there you've got the two sides and you've got the front and back so it's really um, obvious where all the paint goes and you can really precisely follow this particular scheme or all of the schemes included if you want to um, and like I said three different paint options and there's a lot more variety you've got just a general kind of very dark green and red um, red brown scheme with a lot of paint on it then you've got this one which is a lot more of the dark yellow with sort of more spots painted on. Uh, and then you've got this one with the famous ambush pattern which is a lot of fun to do. I like to do it, I find it quite relaxing to paint all the dots. <laughs> um, and then on the back here you've just got some of Vespid's other products, all of them are pretty new. And um, yeah, they're going to be pretty similar to the standard of this kit. Um, and speaking of such, let's have a little look at the actual parts. So you'll have a lot of double ups here and there for different options such as the hulls here with the only real difference between these hulls being the uh, cover here is removed for a different version. But um, both of them are really nicely done. We'll have a look at them up close and you can see you've got the frames there, you've got all of the weld marks and the joints moulded in uh, and they look really nice. Nice details on the mudguard there. Again, really good detail on the roof there. You can see the um, slight welding texture there. Um, you can see all of the um, areas where the hatches go, you can see all the rivets for the various access panels, all of the hatch details are moulded in for the back there, um, and it all looks really quite nice. And similar affair on the uh, bottom of the tank here, again you've got some nicely done weld joints and marks there, 
Uh, a little bit of better detail in terms of the hatches and access ports on the underside there. They're all really nicely done and weld marks again really good. Here you can see that the uh, running gear, some of the uh, springs and uh, the hatches or access points for the um, torsion bar system are there and they're really nicely done. There. And um, we'll have a look at some of the finer details on the sprues that we've got here. There's quite a lot of sprues as opposed to these of Ezra kit. Um, so a couple of them are double ups, such as this one we've got here. So these are all for the uh, the running gear system, basically. So you've got things here like your road wheels. Again, detail is really quite nice. It's very sharp and good. The sprockets are looking really nice there. All of the uh, the rivets and various details are moulded into them really quite nicely, as you can see. And it's all very crisp. There's no flash or any other imperfections on them. Uh, no injector pin markings in the wrong spot. Um, they're really nicely done hatches there. You've got all of the detail on them. Uh, and here's a nice part here. You can see the exhaust. If I get the light on it just right, you've actually got the turbine molded in there. So got the other sprues here with the um, the rear plate or the rear panel for the, the hole there, which is really nice. You've got your little um, storage bins there, your um, details there for the um, final drive cover. And um, yeah, again, really nicely done. Some of the finer details for the tools here, um, there's no real imperfections, the machine gun barrel there, it's all looking really quite nicely detailed and very clean and crisp. Here you've got one set of optional side skirts, relatively thick because it's plastic, but um, as you'll see in a minute we'll have a look at the photo etch parts. Uh, here you've got the cover for the machine gun and they've actually done a really nice job at getting a kind of imperfect armor texture on that part there and yeah if I hold it to the light you can kind of see it's got some dimples and imperfections so they look really quite nice. Uh, travel locks there, some of the vision slits and sights and periscopes that sort of thing all really quite nicely done there. Another set of uh, road wheels here it's a similar affair really nicely done I think these are the steel versions because um, a lot of tanks, uh, German tanks in the later part of the war would have steel road wheels rather than rubber because they were running out of rubber. Here you've got your tracks, so as you can see they're made out of hard plastic. You can bend them still relatively easily and they won't hold shape as well as the Zvezda tracks, but they're kind of not intended to. You're supposed to kind of link them all up. Um, and because the moulding is so really um, precise and clean, you're probably not going to have too much of a challenge actually getting them to line up. So as long as you follow the instructions carefully, I reckon you can get a really nice set of detailed tracks there because the pattern is looking really quite nice and it's the same on both sides. You've got all the links there molded, all the guide pins, they look really good. Uh, and then you've got your turret here or some of the turret parts and um, yeah so you've got a few different accessories as well so like your tow cable they're nicely molded there as you can see. Um, you've got a few little dots here, I'm not actually sure what these are for but um, I'm sure all will be revealed when I actually build the kit. Um, some nice armor texturing again on the commander's uh, hatch there. Um, some of the air filters and various attachment points for things. Uh, here you've got a few different options for the um, mantlets. Um, I'm not quite too sure what the difference is between these ones, but the main difference is that one version is the uh, more generic panther one, and the other has this sort of extra piece added on here because um, it's a little bit of a shot trap. What you get is if someone fires at the mantlet and it hits it in this lower part, sometimes the shell might shatter and then send debris into the, um, the upper part of the hull right there. And that's a lot weaker on the roof there, obviously, because you want less armor there to save weight because you're less likely to get hit on the roof. Um, so rather than up armoring the roof of the hull, which is very uh, heavy, they instead added an extra little extension piece here so that the um, shrapnel would be directed outwards rather than down straight into the weak part of the tank. So that's a little bit of an innovation there. It's nice that they've got the optional parts there. Um, and they're really nicely done. You can see then again there's a kind of imperfect texture there. You've got those kind of cut marks and the... I believe they were cast, but I could be wrong. But uh, it, it's really nicely done. And on top of that you've still got the holes there for the gunner sight on this side and the machine gun on the other, all looking really quite nice. And uh, you've even got the debris cover there. So they've gone to a lot of detail and it's all come out really well of the moulds. Uh, here's your front plate there, and you've got again weld marks, you've got a little bit of that armour imperfect, um, imperfection texture there, really nicely done. And uh, here's your gun barrel, and as you can see, unlike on the Zvezda kit, they actually managed to mould the um, hole there for the actual um, barrel. So that's really quite nicely done there, and um, 
yeah, it looks brilliant. You don't have to do any uh, melting of parts with a fine needle to get any of the um, extra details there. All looks really good. Um, other part here you've got is top of the turret there. Again, nice weld lines, nice little fine details, nice armor texture. You kind of get the idea. It's a very nicely done kit. Um, and on top of the plastic parts here, you've got some nice extra little photo etched parts. Um, for doing the really fine details such as the radiators, um, the, the grills that cover them, and uh, also the side skirts which would have been made out of a very incredibly thin piece of metal. Um, so capturing these kind of details in 70 second scale with plastic is a bit tricky because obviously plastic has to be relatively thick to kind of come out of the mould right, but with the photo etch details, as you can see, they can be pretty much paper thin. So that's really nice inclusion there. They are a little bit fiddly, but like I said, you'll get a lot better detail, especially in 70 second scale out of them. You can just see how nicely done the um, the grills are there and how thin the side skirts are. And you can also bend these quite easily. Um, as I was saying earlier, on a lot of German tanks, you'll find that the side skirts would get damaged a lot of the time because they were very likely to run into stuff. Really nice photo etch details. You've also got the, uh, the gun here with the metal barrel and the 3D printed muzzle and the idea of that part is it's supposed to be even more finely detailed than the plastic one included. Um, personally I think given the quality of the plastic one it's you probably don't even really need to use this but um, it's still nice that they've included that and um, who knows might be able to use that as a spare to upgrade other kits with. Um, but one of the really nicely done 3D printed parts would be the sight, the infrared system. So let's pop it out of the bag here. And as you can see, it's all one piece, and the detail on it is excellent. You kind of got to break it off of that kind of frame there. So when it's printed, it has the support frames there, but you very carefully cut them out, and you can get some very nicely done fine details. And then you basically just have to paint that up and be very careful with it. Um, decals included, they're pretty similar to these Avesta ones because all you've really got for German tanks is the Balkan Kruz and the numbers there. Um, so yeah, I have no idea what Vespa decals are like because I haven't actually used them personally, but I suspect given the quality of the rest of the kit, they are going to be really good. So that's the kind of higher end kit. It comes in at around about $30, which is a little bit more pricey than the Zvezda kit, but given that you get all the extra details and goodies, it's not a bad deal at all. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a kit for a more experienced modeler. You've got some more advanced things to work with, such as the 3D printed parts and the uh, photo etching, which needs a little bit of experience, I think, to get it done perfectly. And uh, obviously you've got a lot more finer details, so it's going to take a lot longer to put together than the Zvezda kit. So not ideal for war gamers. Um, however, it's got the um, very iconic and uh, pretty cool infrared system included, which you don't get on many other normal commercial kits of the Panther. So really quite a nice kit, definitely one if you want a nice detailed late war panther.